What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Endeavor officially acquires WWE and landmark deal. On the heels of various reports emerging that the UFC's parent company, Endeavor, was looking to buy the WWE, a deal was finalized and subsequently announced to kick off the week. As part of the deal, many fans of both promotions have wondered as to what this could mean going forward. As part of the first series of rumors this past weekend, it was reported that under the new company consisting of the UFC and the WWE, Vince McMahon would actually be higher up on the corporate ladder than Dana White. Now, on the heels of the official announcement, Ari Emanuel has confirmed that White remains in control of the UFC and McMahon in charge of the WWE. The way he and Endeavor seem to see things, a company with two of the biggest sports and entertainment promotions in the world creates a pretty unstoppable team. Emanuel spoke in an interview with CNBC on Monday about the situation, saying that, at the end of the day, the creative control of both companies will still fall to White and McMahon, respectively. Here's what we said, right? Um, and I said it to him. If we disagree on something that we want to do, guess what? We're not doing it. Um, it's the relationship I have with Silver Lake. Um, I would never put that, and it's the relationship I have with Dana. Dana's got the say as it relates to the UFC. Vince, as it relates to the WWE, he's going to have the, he's going to have the say. We, we, we have nothing to do with the creative process. Um, that's Vince's and that's Dana's situation. At the same time, WWE CEO Nick Khan believes that the two companies will be able to play off one another nicely, with Brock Lesnar crossing over many years ago and former UFC champion Ronda Rousey making quite the name for herself under the WWE banner in recent years. Khan believes the two sides will be able to collaborate. He spoke to OutKick about it. You saw Brock Lesnar go from WWE to the UFC, where he became its heavyweight champion, then come back to the WWE. You saw Ronda Rousey and her amazing run with the UFC come over to the WWE. Daniel Cormier was a special guest referee for us in our October Premium Live event this past year. Opportunities like that will continue. What do you think about the UFC and WWE merger? Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. UFC 287 Commentary Team Set with Fight Night right around the corner, the UFC has officially finalized the commentary team as well as the broadcasting crew for the evening's festivities in Miami, Florida. Given that the card will take place in the United States, Fight fans will be treated to an evening with Joe Rogan and Daniel Cormier alongside the one and only John Anik. The evening will also play host to the desk debut of top-ranked lightweight Dustin Poirier, who will join Dean Thomas and Michael Eaves on the post-fight show. The announcement regarding Poirier making his desk debut drew the attention of lightweight Terrence McKinney, who praised the diamond for what he calls a smart decision. The way he sees things, every fighter should think about their post-fight careers. As we've seen in recent years, more and more fighters are beginning to make the transition into broadcasting while continuing to fight. In addition to former fighters like Michael Bisping and Alan Juban, active fighters like Anthony Smith and Michael Chiesa have found success behind the desk. Things will kick off at 6 p.m. Eastern Time with the early prelims on ESPN Plus before then making the jump to ESPN for the preliminary card at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. At 10 p.m. Eastern, the broadcast switches to pay-per-view with Raul Rosas Jr. and Christian Rodriguez kicking off the main card. Before we continue, make sure you give that like button some love and be sure to subscribe to the MMA Zone for all of the latest news. Gilbert Burns confident he can finish Colby Covington. Although Gilbert Burns knows he has a tough task in front of him on Saturday night in the form of the BMF Jorge Masvidal, he actually has his sights set on another opponent, Colby Chaos Covington. During a recent interview with MMA Junkie, Burns spoke about his upcoming fight as well as his prediction for how a showdown with Covington could play out. Because he's been calling the guys, this guy out forever and he's being smart. Sitting now like, and fight Tyron Woodley and then relax and fight for the title again and pick another guy that is not on his prime and coming for loss, oh, Max Vidal, and then win and get another title shot. He's being smart. But I hope one day I see Kobe and we get this done. It's quite, I believe he can finish Kobe. Covington, of course, seems to be on a collision course with welterweight champion Leon Edwards. According to the latest reports, Edwards and Covington could square off this summer in London. At the same time, however, both Burns and Miles Vidal are confident that with a big win this Saturday at UFC 287, they could steal the title shot away from Chaos. 
Whether or not anything deters the UFC from Covington's planned title shot, only time will tell. How do you see things playing out on Saturday between Mazidal and Burns? Drop your predictions in the comment section down below. UFC fight updates and rumors. With plenty of reports flying around regarding upcoming fights and potential fights, let's take a look at some of the biggest stories of the day. According to Michael Chiesa, he will not be fighting Joaquin Buckley on short notice at UFC 287 this weekend after Li Jingliang was forced out of their scheduled bout with spine issues. Although reports emerged that Buckley would be stepping in on short notice, Chiesa now reportedly won't be fighting until this summer, where he's targeting a fight against Gunnar Nelson at UFC 291. This week, Nate Manis also broke some unfortunate news, revealing on social media that he won't be able to compete against Zalgas Zumagulov at UFC 288 on May 6th as a result of an injury. According to his post, specialists have recommended surgery, However, he's looking for a second opinion with the UFC. A pretty big welterweight scrap between two of the most exciting fighters in the division is also reportedly in the works. According to MMA Sucka, a clash between Steven Wonderboy Thompson and Michael Pereira is in the works for UFC 289, with the fight nearly finalized. Last but not least, it has been revealed that a previously reported fight between Kamaru Usman and Shavkat Rachmanov will not be taking place. Reports this week suggested that the bout was in the works However, that has since been refuted by Rachmanov's team. With the reports being false, the expectation is that the UFC will continue to work towards booking a fight between Rachmanov and Bilal Muhammad. Jorge Masvidal hints at retirement with UFC 287 loss. It's no secret that Jorge Masvidal's back is against the wall going into UFC 287, with a three-fight skid to his name that has seen him drop two bids at the title, as well as a loss to his former training partner turned rival Colby Covington, Masvidal knows he needs a win if he wants to remain relevant in the welterweight division. With fight week officially underway, the BMF believes a loss could spell the end of his storied career. At the end of the UFC 287 countdown video, Masvidal dropped a major bombshell. This could be the last one. If I lose, I'm pretty much calling it quits. But a win against Gilbert means that things are headed in the right direction. So if I roll the dice and I do everything right, I'm going for it all. For one title or many titles. As it currently stands, Masvidal is a pretty sizable underdog. Despite that, the fact that he'll be competing in Miami, where he will overwhelmingly be the fan favorite, has many wondering if he can turn back the clock and get a big win. How do you see things playing out? Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. And now for our breaking news story of the day. We have the MMA community slamming Jorge Masvidal over his recent appearance on UFC's Embedded, where he pointed a gun at the UFC cameraman and acted like Scarface. Here's what some fans had to say about the situation. What an absolute moron. Jorge Masvidal is pointing a real gun at a UFC Embedded cameraman to look cool like Scarface. Not surprised he's a felon. No gun safety. He's such a f***ing tryhard. You know he lays in bed at night and asks, who am I? LMAO. What do you think about Jorge Masvidal pretending to be Scarface? Are people overreacting? Let us know in the comments below. Nick Diaz reflects on 2021 fight with Robbie Lawler. When Nick Diaz arrived for UFC 266 fight week, he didn't seem to be enjoying himself. While the Stockton superstar and the general of the Nick Diaz army has been honest about his lack of love for fighting in the past, something felt different. Weeks prior, he looked to be in arguably the best shape of his life. However, when fight week rolled around, it was revealed he was nowhere near the contracted weight limit. As a result, the fight was moved to middleweight, with Diaz subsequently dropping a third round TKO come fight night. After the loss, many expected Diaz to walk away from the sport. However, he did quite the opposite. He underwent surgery to repair discs in his neck and stayed in the USADA testing pool, fueling speculation regarding his return. During a recent appearance to Dying to See Me, Diaz revealed that he didn't have a manager at that point and was essentially backed into the fight. And so I, I couldn't amount to a level, a level of athleticism. I needed to be competitive and I knew that going into the fight and then I was going into this fight like, oh man, I really got it coming. So I didn't really go in there like to win. I, yeah. I just I just needed to get that, that first fight out. I hadn't fought for a long time. Right. And um, yeah, I, I'd never fought under those conditions. Do you think he makes a return to the Octagon this year? Drop your thoughts in the comments section below. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with MMA news every day. Here are the top comments from yesterday's video.
Damn, I was looking forward to the heavyweight Chris Barnett front flip. Hope a speedy recovery. They should have fought in the UFC. He really must not remember those 13 seconds, huh? Can't wait to see what Darren does in boxing, because he has good footwork, good stand-up. He'll have to incorporate the job more, but I think he'll be successful. And I hope he is successful, because I'm a fan of his, and I think he's a great fighter. Imagine being Masvidal's age, calling yourself game bread. And those were the top comments from yesterday's video. If you want to be featured on our next video, make sure to leave a comment and don't forget to check out yesterday's video in case you missed it.